For decades, the F-15 Eagle has ruled the skies with unmatched power. Trusted by nations worldwide, this iconic fighter has proven itself time and again. While many jets share similar traits, one thing sets the Eagle apart, its ability to evolve. Adaptable, upgradable, and always combat-ready, it stayed relevant through generations of warfare. Now, the U.S. is introducing the next chapter, the F-15 EX Eagle II. Tougher, smarter, and deadlier, it's built to dominate. But what makes this new version so powerful? How does it keep pace with cutting-edge tech? Join us as we explore the battle-ready might of the F-15 EX, America's newest aerial powerhouse. The U.S. Air Force is about to add another beast to its fleet, the F-15 EX from Boeing's Lot 2. This advanced jet is heading to the 142nd wing of the Oregon Air National Guard, a major step in modernizing U.S. air defenses. Boeing Defense recently shared a photo confirming the aircraft is ready for delivery. But this isn't just about swapping old for new. It's a huge leap in capability. Based at Portland Air National Guard Base, the 142nd Wing has long protected U.S. skies over the Pacific Northwest. Until now, they've flown the F-15C, a workhorse since the late 70s, but clearly aging. The F-15EX brings major upgrades in speed, tech, and firepower. To understand how far it's come, we need to go back, to the Vietnam War. Back then, the U.S. Air Force and Navy had very different visions for air combat. Jets were designed around the idea that long-range missiles would dominate. That meant fast aircraft with powerful radar, but little focus on maneuverability. The F-4 Phantom II was a prime example, fast, heavily armed, but built without an internal gun. Used across the Air Force, Navy, and Marines, the F-4 was meant to counter Soviet jets like the MiG-21. But combat told a different story. Rules of engagement often forced pilots into close-range fights, where agility was key. The heavy F-4 struggled in dogfights against the nimble MiG-21. Worse, early missiles were far from perfect, and without guns, pilots were left at a disadvantage. Early versions of the F-4 Phantom weren't as reliable in close combat as expected, forcing the military to rethink fighter design. To fix this, the F-4 was later upgraded with a built-in M-61 Vulcan cannon for better performance in dogfights. The big lesson? Speed alone wasn't enough. One major influence behind this shift was Air Force pilot and strategist John Boyd. He introduced the energy maneuverability theory which argued that agility and power were more important than raw speed. His ideas inspired the Fighter Mafia, a group that pushed for small, highly maneuverable fighters with a thrust-to-weight ratio near 1 to 1, top speed around Mach 2.3, and a light frame of 40,000 pounds. This led the U.S. Navy to launch its own fighter program. Defense Secretary Robert McNamara wanted both the Navy and Air Force to use a shared design to save costs, even if that meant compromises. This gave rise to the TFX program and the F-111, but by the mid-1960s, the Navy realized the F-111 didn't meet its needs and started the VFAX program for a dedicated naval jet. At the same time, McNamara pushed the Air Force to look at cheaper fighters for short-range and support missions to replace older jets like the F-100. The Navy leaned toward the A-4 and A-7, while the Air Force preferred the F-5 which could attack and defend. But it became clear a single-role aircraft wouldn't cut it. They needed one for ground attack and another for air superiority. After 18 months of study, the conclusion was obvious. Each service had different needs. The Navy wanted long range and flexibility, while the Air Force focused on extreme maneuverability. This led to separate aircraft programs that shaped future U.S. jets. In early 1965, a report recommended the Air Force buy either the F-5 or A-7 and start developing a new high-performance fighter. This became more urgent when two F-105s were shot down by older MiG-17s in Vietnam, proof that speed alone wasn't enough. That same month, Pentagon official Harold Brown backed the F-5 for now but urged work on a new fighter, later known as the FX program. Initial plans called for 800 to 1,000 jets prioritizing agility over speed. Though there was talk of hitting Mach 3, General Gabriel Dizosway, head of Tactical Air Command, 
suggested scaling back to Mach 2.5 to cut costs. By October 1965, the Air Force finalized its wish list, and in December, sent requests to 13 aircraft makers. Meanwhile, in November, the Air Force picked the A-7 for ground attack, making the need for a dedicated air superiority fighter even more pressing. Then, in 1967, the Soviet Union revealed the MiG-25, a high-speed, high-altitude interceptor built from stainless steel. It reached speeds over Mach 2.8 and looked like it could beat any U.S. fighter in the sky. The MiG-23 also raised alarms, seeming to outperform the F-4. To keep air dominance, the Air Force needed a new topter jet. Some officials wanted a multi row plane, but others pushed for a pure air superiority fighter to counter the MiG-25. Around the same time, the Navy dropped VFAX and approved the Agile F-14 Tomcat. There was concern the Navy's design might be forced on the Air Force, so in 1968, the Air Force made its own move. That year, they launched a formal search for a new fighter. Requirements included a single-seat design, 40,000 pounds takeoff weight, twin engines for fast throttle response, Mach 2.5 speed, long-range radar, and stealth features. In December 1968, four companies submitted proposals. The Air Force dropped General Dynamics and advanced with Fairchild Republic, North American Rockwell, and McDonnell Douglas. By June 1969, all submitted designs. On December 23, 1969, McDonnell Douglas won the contract. To speed up development, they skipped most of the prototype phase. The design resembled the F-14 but used fixed wings, based on NASA wind tunnel data. Eventually, the Air Force refined the concept, realizing the jet was too complex. This led to a new vision, and the birth of the F-15, a pure air superiority fighter built to outfly and outfight anything in the sky. The early F-15 lineup included the single-seat F-15A and the two-seat TF-15, later renamed the F-15B. Powered by cutting-edge Pratt and Whitney F-100 engines, the jet boasted a thrust-to-weight ratio over 1 to 1 making it incredibly agile. A planned 25mm cannon was scrapped due to development issues, so the F-15 kept the reliable M-61 Vulcan gun. It carried four Sparrow missiles and a low-drag setup, and its wide fuselage helped generate extra lift. Originally built for a 4,000-hour service life, upgrades pushed that to 8 plus hours. The first F-15A flew on July 27, 1972, followed by the two-seat B model in 1973. Its advanced radar offered look-down slash shoot-down capabilities, tracking low-flying targets while ignoring ground clutter. The cockpit was modern for its time, with simplified controls that let one pilot handle everything. Unlike older jets like the F-14 or F-4, the F-15 used a single canopy frame for better forward visibility. As the U.S.'s first true air superiority fighter since the F-86 Sabre, the F-15 quickly gained fans among allies like Israel and Japan. Some critics said it was too big and pricey for close-in dogfights, sparking the later push for lighter, cheaper jets like the F-16 and F-18. Still, the F-15 earned a reputation as one of the most dominant fighters ever built. Over time, the F-15 showed its age as new threats and tech advances outpaced it. By 2010, the U.S. Air Force faced an aging fighter fleet with too few replacements. Budget cuts after the Cold War and focus on counterterrorism delayed upgrades, shrinking top-tier fighter numbers. The original plan to replace F-15A, D with 381 F-22 Raptors was cut short in 2009 at just 187 jets. To fill the gap, 179 F-15C-DS were upgraded into Golden Eagles, F-15 2040C, with new radars, infrared tracking, and the APOS electronic warfare system. Some upgrades went to F-15E Strike Eagles too. APOS development in 2015 helped keep the F-15 relevant, but aging airframes and costly maintenance made upgrades insufficient. Delays in the F-35 left a gap in air superiority. Restarting F-22 production was too expensive. The answer, the F-15EX. A modern, 
cost-effective update with advanced avionics, increased missile capacity, and improved electronic warfare. Not stealthy, but crucial while newer jets develop. Boeing's work on F-15 updates for foreign buyers led to the Advanced Eagle variants, the F-15SA in 2013 and Qatar's F-15QA in 2017. For the USAF, studies showed mixing 4th and 5th gen fighters was cheaper than all stealth, opening the door for the F-15EX, two-seat model, to replace aging F-15C-DS. The 2019 defense budget funded eight F-15EX jets, keeping Boeing's production line alive. The F-15EX features ASA radar, IRSD, new electronic warfare, a tougher airframe rated for 20,000 flight hours, and the amber rack, increasing missile load to 22, more than any F-15 before. Though not stealthy, the F-15EX serves homeland defense, base protection, no-fly zone enforcement, and carries large standoff weapons alongside stealth fighters. In 2020, the Pentagon ordered eight jets for $1.2 billion. The first flew in early 2021 and was named Eagle II. By 2021, 20 jets were funded with plans for 144, later cut to 80. Early models dropped conformal fuel tanks to reduce costs.